Hey guys, it's Sunday morning, early. I'm gonna do a flame job for you. This time I'll do a complete flame job. I wanna see how fast I can actually do one. Normally what I do is uh, do the flame layout on one section, and then I'll take quarter inch, my insurance tape that I call it, and then I outline that. That will help prevent blow through, and it'll also help keep the ovals and the licks from popping up on me. So I do one section, then the center section, then the, uh, the other side. But for the sake of this video, all I'm going to do is a flame layout and maybe I'll start doing the insurance tape so you get a general idea of how that works. So I got these all 600 and wet sand. And what I mean by that, I DA 600 and then I wet sand with half sheets, thousand grits. Look at one of my previous videos and you'll see how I do that. It solely just shows uh, the process of that. So these are all set. I've wiped them down. I've tacked them off. So I use 6306, which is a 16th inch, 3M tape, and then I use 26344 tape, which is quarter inch. That's my insurance tape. Again, I outline with the 16th inch, the flame job itself, and then I go back over with the quarter inch. So right now it is 7.30 Sunday morning. So we are gonna begin here. So you get to see the whole process. I'll be yakking along the way and giving you tips and how I do it. I've done thousands of these flame jobs on motorcycles. So I usually start with the front fender. Doesn't matter what you start with. This is a split tank set. So I guess realistically I got four pieces. So let's go ahead and get started. Oh, by the way, first couple feet, usually what you got to do is just go ahead and pull it off and break it because there's always a seam there. Or most every time I've seen, there's a seam there. And you don't want a seam on the edge of your flames there. So, here we go. Always push down your tape. Now, if this was like a car door or a hood or something, a bigger panel, I usually use eighth inch. I never use eighth inch to do flames on motorcycle parts. It's hard to get tight curves. So you can see, you know, they're kind of smaller flames than I normally would do on a car. So we got this side all done. I'll go up here. Make sure you push down your tape. Recently I've had a problem with the 6306 popping up on me. The surface is nice and prepped and everything, so I don't know if it's an old batch or whatever. But... Okay, I got my Annie's and Audi flames. As I mentioned before in videos, these are my Audi's. This is an Innie. Go up here. You see my markers, I put them right down the center. This one I'll go all the way down. If you want to, you can grab a small measuring tape and you know they they never have to be perfect. This is not gonna be a symmetrical flame job. Still popping up. Okay. You want a nice taper job. Start at a point. Gradually get bigger and bigger. Swing back. Another thing too, quarter inch gap. Quarter inch gap. That makes it easy. You put your 26344, four, your quarter inch masking tape in between those. Realistically, you could go 16th, 16th, and an eighth inch, because all those combined would be a quarter inch, but that's pushing the envelope. If you leave a quarter inch spacing in between, you're good. Oh, 
always like to make sure these look nice here. Sometimes if you go down too far and put the curve down here, it just doesn't look right, I think. So we're gonna go one more. Okay. This side's gonna go a little farther than the other side. Now, as you can see, I use this marker. I have about the same spacing on both sides. So it looks, I'm not looking from the front. I'm looking from back here. So I use this as a guide. So now what I do, I come back here. Connect the two, the top and the side. I'll put a little marker right here since I'm not going to be looking over here I'm going to be watching me lay this tape here so I come back it's about right doesn't have to be perfect on a fender because this is not a symmetrical job okay another marker for that one Actually, I want it a little bit lower. I'll pull that off. Aim it just a little bit lower. Okay, now what I'm going to do, I'm going to put my fingers across from each other. I'm going to put a guide right here. That lets me know that I need to put this oval. I'll go ahead and do this first. Now, I'll finish this off. Okay, then I'll come back. This is the easy part. Actually, that curve's not very good. Nice to be nice and fluid and smooth. These racks really help. This thing's probably, this rack's probably 20 years old. Okay. Now we have the front fender. Tails come off. Markers come off. Any tails that are overlapping. Marker. There we had the front fender. Okay, that one actually pulled up on me. That's why you put the quarter inch on as you go. You can see what happened right there. It pulled on me. But again, for the sake of this video, I'll go back and fix that. So we're gonna go ahead and do this rear fender now. First thing I do on these, is I mark where the struts go. Just these front two holes. The soft tail fender, so each fender is different. But... That way I eliminate the problem of having this line for the flame job going through the strut. I never was a fan of those, so. Okay, so. You want to leave your space because the strut comes about three quarters of an inch above there. Yeah, okay, I'm doing an any on the side here. Swing this back, quarter inch gap, 
I want to make sure I end up below the tail light. I'm going to do one more here. I actually use the tail light bracket as a guide or a marker. Again, enough for my quarter inch. So basically what I'm going to do, I use this first piece as a guide. I'm going to pull that off. So now that I got my ovals marked, right around that hole. Actually, may end up going through it. Right in front of it. Okay, there we have the top. I'm gonna work on this one. You can see how this looks right now. I'm gonna pull this top one off, bring it just a little more forward before I start going down. Makes it look a little bit better. Okay, now we'll do the top. I'm gonna to go through the tail light. Starting to rain pretty hard here. Okay, I'll go ahead and put another marker here. I'll go right through the taillight hole and the seat hole. Come up here. Always nice to ask the customer if they have a solo seat or a standard seat. So if it's a solo seat, of course you want the flames to run farther up. If you don't know for sure, you should probably just go ahead and do a layout so it accommodates a solo seat. I'll do one more flame here, one more lick. See how that's wide, gets skinny right there? I don't like that, I want it wide. Okay, let's do this other side. Okay, I'll go ahead and connect these like I did the front fender. I want to tear a little bit here because I know it's going to be wider there on this plane. Okay, I'll use a marker right there. Actually, I want a little more of a bump right there. There we go. Another marker like I did the front fender. Okay, I know on this one I want to go past this uh, tail light. So I know I got to carry this one pretty far. So let's tear off that there. So it's good to do practice doing the flames forward and the flames going reverse. See right here, I'm close. I want a little closer. And you want it going through the tail light, which comes down to about right here. So you want to make sure your tips go down that far. 
So, like the front fender, I'll go ahead and mark that, which is about right there. You can put a little, just a real tiny fingernail scratch in that. You see that right there. close to the edge of the fender. Okay, let's see. I ended this. Mark this side. About right there. I'll put a little marker there. This is the easy part. Okay, there's the rear fender. Again, we got to remove the markers, the overlapping tails, lips. Looks good to me. So I'll also go back and make sure these are symmetrical or very close to each other. These I really don't care about. You know, it makes it a little more, a uh, little different. So the tanks. I use the same process as a single tank. So basically what I do, let's tack these off one more time. Start upright. Make sure they're sitting nice right here. Sometimes I've used the clamp to hold these together. Some of these tanks fall over, so you want to do something like that. I've had one actually fall off the table, which is not good. First markers I do, pretty much where the dash is. Want to make sure those are real close to each other. About a half inch there, half inch there, maybe a little more on this side. Now on the split tanks, normally the bungs are the same, same size. On a single tank, like on the soft tails, the left side's bigger because it's a fuel gauge. So you got to remember that when you're doing a flame mount. So basically what I'll do, right down the center there, down the center and then what I'll do is come back and tear so that's where my oval is going to be actually I want a little farther back As you can see, I used this one marker that I just put down and checked the spacing on that. I used that as a guide over here. So now what I want to do is these are sitting even. I'll take a piece of tape, go straight across, do the same thing. No big deal if that pops up over there. Okay, let's see. Actually, I want a little smaller oval. 
sometimes it's best just to pull the tape off and redo it. Okay, that looks good. That looks good. This is where this line comes into play. Walk the tape around the oval. Got to hold these down. Okay, now what I'll do, I'll put another marker up here. Notice the spacing right here. So those are very, very close together, or close to each other. I'll put a piece of tape right down the center here. Down the center. Make sure the gap is about the same. Okay, I'll dig in on this. I'll turn it around. So again, I'm taping more or less reverse from the normal way you would do it. Okay. Notice quarter inch gap right there. Okay, I'm gonna put a long tailed, long lick uh, any flame right here. The top will be a little bit shorter. I want a little bit bigger oval. Okay, quarter inch gap. I'm going to swing a lick way back there. Longer licks really make it look like it flows real nice. Okay, now I'll swing this one up. And this will end it. Okay, there's one side of the tank. Put that back up there. Make sure they're nice and even. Okay, I'll run this straight across. Now again, these bungs are even, the same size on these uh, split tanks. So, the gapping, I want about a half inch right there. And also, probably three quarters of an inch right there. Okay, that looks good. That's good. And what you can do is take your fingernail, put your hands directly across, of course, make sure the tanks are still lined up. Just put a little mark in there. You can see that mark right there that I put. Right there. So what you can do, put your fingers up here, directly across. Once you get good at it, you can kind of tell, you know, if your fingers remove this marker. Yeah, once you get good, you can tell if your fingers are directly across from each other. You want it symmetrical. So, okay, we'll go up and come back. I got a quarter inch in between right here and the next lick. Okay, that looks good. Looks good. Okay, now what I do, I come up here, double check that oval, which it looks pretty good, very good actually. So now what I do is while I'm up here, not only am I checking this oval, make sure these are, you got them up so you can check them. I come down here, 
I measure this, I go directly across, that's my next oval. If you want to, you can also do down here. There's straight across. So now I got this oval, and I got this one coming up, so I got markers for those. I'll come back here. Nice on the split tanks, you can actually turn them sideways. Good. Okay, the bottom look was longer. Okay, that looks good. You can see that's even. Comes back. Looks good so far. I got a bigger oval here. So what I want to do. See here. Oh, that slipped on me. What about a three quarter inch gap? Oh, that's pretty good. Okay, we got one more here. I'll come to about right there. see what we got here. Okay, that one's too far forward there. We'll come back. Just like that. That. Okay, let's see the front here. See if I'm fairly close. Okay, I can either move this one up. Now, when I go back over the tanks, I'll finish this off nice and neat with just quarter inch masking tape and airbrush there. So I'll actually just bring this one down. Okay, obviously gotta fix this oval. So sometimes you can get lucky and just push it up there. Sometimes you may have to redo it. So looks good, looks good there, there, and there. Looks very good. So what I'll do, this is an important step for me. I feel, I'll tear this back, I'll tear this back, and I'll finish this right here. I run it right into the uh, bung there. Okay, that looks good, notice the gap very close to each other, close to each other. So I'll point this out before I turn this around and finish this off. Is you want these, especially on a tank, even though the fenders are not symmetrical, I like making the top of this uh, tank symmetrical as possible. What I do is make sure these licks, these here, see this one's actually farther on the left side than the right side. So you can either raise this up or bring this one down. So what we'll do, I guess since I've already got that tied down, I'll come over here and raise this one up. Nice taper. Okay, we'll turn this around, turn them together. 
and we'll finish this off right there. Finish this one off right there. Looks good. Okay, there you have it. I'll go around, fix any ovals that I need to. Uh, fix it licks. Fix any that came off. Again, it's very important that you take your quarter inch and as you're going, do a little bit, tie it down like I did this. You should outline it, make sure there's no gap because it, it's useless then. You gotta make sure you're right on top of the 16th inch. So make sure these are fairly symmetrical on the tanks. Fenders you can get away with. You want those nice and flowing. So basically that's it. Uh, it's uh, 28 minutes that it took me. So anyway, that concludes this video. Uh, my wife and I are going to finish masking this up and definitely got to uh, put some uh, quarter inch down there. Now this is going to sit, it's Sunday, I'm not going to do the airbrushing today, so what we're going to do, we're going to mask these up. Once it's completely uh, taped up and masked up, we'll take a piece of quarter inch on all the ovals, make sure they don't lift up. If you don't do that, you're going to have a problem coming in tomorrow or over the weekend or whatever. Those will lift up and you're gonna have blow through all over the place. So make sure you tie those down when you're ready to airbrush, right before it, pull those off. And anyway, guys, that concludes this video. I hope you enjoyed it. So thumbs up, 28 minute paint job. I don't expect you to do it that fast, but you know, I wanted to do a fast video all the way through, so you saw some tips and tricks of what I do. I've done thousands of these flame jobs. So hopefully it helps you out. Thumbs up and subscribe. Appreciate you guys.